With 29 years and 10 albums under their belt, Monster Magnet have truly earned the status of legends in their own right. Lead singer, guitarist, and founding member and songwriter Dave Windorf was a pioneer of this style of retro, psychedelic, hard rock before there was even a term for it, and he is still going strong to this day. Monster Magnet just released their 10th album, Mindfucker, and once again proved that they can do it as good, if not better, than any of their peers. I had the privilege to speak with Dave recently, and let me tell you, he is one cosmic motherfucker, okay? I mean, we talked about the root of his songwriting, which alone is cosmic as hell. We talked about his love for Captain Beyond, and even his love for newer bands such as Graveyard, Blues Pills, and Cadaver, just to name a few. This was such a fun conversation, but um, hey, you know what? Enough of me. Let's get to this, shall we? Well, welcome to the Great Southern Brain Farts podcast, man. How you doing? My pleasure to be here. I'm well, good. I don't hear that a whole lot, by the way. Yeah, it's their pleasure to be here. So I like that coming from, <laughs> coming from someone well, who we usually we usually hear like, all right, I'm just doing this because. <laughs> Is that what you hear? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, sometimes it's like a, yeah, okay, or someone's, or it's, usually it's like a, wait, what, what, what is your site called again? Like, right. <laughs> you know, well, like, you know what happens is like, um, you get on these, uh, you get on these, uh, it's just like a junket, you know, I mean, it's just a phone call junket, but you go for a month, like I just went for a month just doing this, you know, for like four hours a day for four days a week. You know. So what happens is you get lost. You know, whoever's doing them, you get lost. And you're like, what, what's going on? So that's why you get people, you know, not knowing what they're doing or not caring. You know? <laughs> that's why I always, I always tend to enjoy the fact that, like, because I guess because of the name of the site, you know, like when I came up with it like ten years ago or whatever, you know, someone was like. Make sure it's something that jumps out and sticks out. And every time I do it, I can always tell it like wakes somebody up. They go, "Whoa, wait, wait, what's the, what's the name of your site again?" You know? Yeah, good. <laughs> so, but yeah, well, speaking speaking of man, I mean, you have been a busy motherfucker, dude, with this awesome new album that you've put out on top of things. But like, like, do you get tired of doing press? I mean, like, I, I, I know it's part of the job, but like. Other times where you're just like I get tired of talking about myself, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know, you get sticky or something. You try it sometime. Try it for a month. Try it, have, you know. Try it for a month. Like I'm this and I'm that. And like at the end of it, I'm like, I don't know. Am I lying? I don't even know who the hell I am anymore. <laughs> um, you know, it's like half show. It's it's like showbiz. You know, it feels like showbiz. No, but that's, that's, I, I like doing it because I get to talk to cool people. You know, I mean, like I'm talking to you, you're obviously a nice person, you know, you got some ideas. It's really, really fun. But it, it, it does get, you know, it, it, it gets uh, weird. So that's a cool way to put that because because one of the things like I always try to do with my interviews is I try I try to I try to open up with something like this to try to get an idea because you know I don't want to ask you so like what do you, what do you think about the new album da, da, like how's the tour going da, you know what I mean like it's like I, you know, yeah I know but but it's weird because it, that's what I mean it's showbiz no matter what happens no matter what anybody says on either side of it everybody's there for the same reason to sell what you got. Right. You know what I mean? And it's, 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 I wouldn't be doing it unless I was doing it. Unless, like, I knew you and we were friends and like, well, let's just, let's just rap, man, and record it for people. Right. You know, for, for some strange reason. <laughs> but, um, let's just do that, you know? It's the internet, man. Um, but it, it's all, it's all about, like, selling or making people aware of that thing, um, which is always a great idea especially when you're selling what I have to sell, um, when I'm selling what I have to sell. But at the same time, I never want it to appear that way. No, that makes, you know? total, yeah, that uh, makes total sense. No, I want people to think it's like, oh, it's natural. He's just doing this because he wants to. But you can't, you can't hide the fact that you are on a press train. And it's just, you know, it's just bizarre. It's always bizarre, but it's always done, and such is the way. You know... So with that being said, like, what is what is one question that you get asked so much that that like the minute it comes, you're just like, ah, oh, here it comes again. No, I, I don't think I don't look at it in terms of that. Uh, it's usually the way they're asked. Oh, okay, that's you know? interesting. Yeah. yeah. So like, you, so you can tell like when someone has done their homework or not, or like, or when someone's like, yeah, yeah, like, and you can I'm tell when when, when when it's some guy just like you know on the on the you know the burn Switzerland. Uh, 
telegram, just just phoning it in. You know, so what do you, you know, I was like, yeah, 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 you got your monster magnet, here you go, okay, what, what do you got? Then you know they're just, and they make mistakes, like, so it's been 10 years since you released the record, and you're like, look, dude, don't, don't even ask. I'll just tell you, I'll write it. <laughs> I've done that for people. I've actually written their pieces for them before. Oh man, see, that's another thing too. Is that because I, I do I do get asked a lot of times, like like will you do email interviews? And I totally understand it because I used to like you know I like to make that connection with whoever I'm talking to, you know, to get to get behind them a little bit. But yeah, you know, it, there's got to be. I mean, there should be a connection. And the only time I've written them for them when when they just fuck it up so bad, I go like I'll just do it. But I totally yeah. understand understand why you guys do that now you know what i mean because like i've mm -hmm. i've interviewed enough people where like by the time i got to them i was like maybe like 15th 20th down the line and they're just like oh man <laughs> <laughs> but you know you know something man it's like um this thing is supposed to be a two-way street and it was uh i think the internet age has kind of made things a little weird but with a lot of print stuff in the past, there was a certain amount of editing and panache that went into the editing to make it a readable thing. Right. Now I'll do an interview, a print interview, and really what they do is just record it and then just blather the whole thing out. Uh -oh. They'll just reprint the interview, which is, as you know, you know, it's like life doesn't go that way. You, you don't... You know, repeated conversations usually don't make good for written pieces. No, nah, so you have to do some editing. You see, know, I, I grew up in the age of like you know, so, so I'm 44. So I grew uh -huh. up reading the the great magazines. You know, like you know, e even even after you learned later in life that a lot of the interviews were contrived. You know, like I read like Circus and Hit Parader and yeah, me you know, too. And, and Cream, and Cream, Cream and, and Circus. We were Rolling and, Stone and blah blah blah. And well, your yeah, faces rocks, whatever. You know what I mean? And like when I would read these interviews, so like. Like my, you know, my take on interviews was that when I was originally doing interviews, I would transcribe them. But what I did was that I didn't want them to be Q and A's. I wanted them to be transcriptions of a conversation. Yes. You know? And so, yeah, of course, that, that's what they're supposed to be. That's what people want to read. They don't want. I, I you know. You know, I, um, I, and I always used to tell people, rule of thumb. I said, I edit for conciseness, not for content. You know what I mean? So, like, you exactly. Know, if, if if you trailed off and you were like, oh, hold on, I have to. I'm not going to type. Dave says, "Hold on." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, unless it like, sounded you know. cool. You know, it, anyway, it, you know, it's a story. People and um, I always wanted to read a story. I wanted to read something that was cool. The vibe of the conversation, um, and if a writer was good, he would he would transfer the the vibe of that conversation through editing. He'd still get the the actual thing. He'd transfer the vibe, but. What happens now in a lot of cases that if it's just a, a blather, just a transcript, well then you know then the the, uh, the the reader has to do their own editing and they're not good at that and you get something that's really boring that most people stop reading after the first paragraph. Right. Yeah. And Honestly, they don't. They don't read them. No. You know? No. And that. And actually, the only reason I even started doing podcasts this year was because a lot of my readers had said, you know, you know, which I, I was complimented by was that, you know, oh, you seem to have a connection with the people you talk to. We'd like to hear that. So I decided to give this a shot just to kind of see how it goes. But I, like I said, I'm still from that old school where like I kind of miss actually sitting down and reading it and and trying trying to get the voice in my head, you know, and trying. Yeah. To, when it's well done, it's totally worth it yeah unfortunately I, I don't know maybe maybe i think you know we're moving towards uh, we have moved towards an audio visual society for the most part so your average schmuck is not gonna you know sit down and like crack a book anytime soon or even open a blog man like and read no, because, because that know. was the other thing too is like and, dude i thought i was high tech with a blog <laughs> you know what i mean and like, yeah I, even and, even the blogs don't get written you know, you know don't get read as much people, i mean you know yeah, people just think like, of all the great stuff out there the um, great stuff that people are writing that nobody's reading <laughs> yeah. dude i did two I, I i think i've interviewed your drummer bob I, I think i've interviewed him like three times maybe like when the, when he was doing the riot god stuff and and like, uh -huh. had, those were some of my favorite interviews, and people would be like, "I had never heard of that guy." <laughs> you know what I mean? That boss be like, fantastic. Oh, He's a totally interesting guy. You know, oh, he totally is. But yeah. you know, but but you know, 
I want to get into you though, and so obviously, you know, to to, to do the sales thing, like you, you got the new album out. I'll be honest, I've been a fan for years. I listened to it, and my, and my first thought was, there's a formula, and it's it 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 hasn't been diverted from much, but it's it still captures this greatness that you brought in like starting in like 90 do you know what i mean like yeah was it ever hard for has it been hard for you to kind of say this is just what i do i i mean i always call it the acdc approach you know what i mean it's like that kind mm-hmm. of if it ain't broke don't fix it you know um yeah i guess so you know i i could go outside the formula um every time i do try to do that people tend to go what what was that you know, like, why? Why did you do that? We we don't like that, you know? Right. So, um, you know, it's something where I discovered pretty early on that the the more varied I made my albums, the, the less people bought them. Now, is that harder um, for you, though? Uh, well, yeah, it's a bummer because creative. when I was a kid, I bought, you know, I bought records that were varied all the time. You know, they were very varied. Uh, you know, David Bowie could come out and put out a record and do anything he wanted. People are like, yeah, okay, we're on board. But it's a different world now. The the good news about sticking to, within a concept of, like, say, Monster Man, what I had envisioned in Monster Man in the beginning is that it has. I haven't run out of gas enjoying it. So I just keep, you know, I, I do what I want within what I think would live in Monster Magnet Land. Right. You know, so are there dinosaurs in Monster Magnet Land? Yes. I like dinosaurs. Are there drugs? Of course there are. You know? Is there... <laughs> there better, you know, there better be, man, because I are, like Monster Magnet Land. Are dinosaurs Magnetland. fighting army men in outer space? Yes. Am I having sex on the moon? Of course. Um, and, and all the stuff that's in there is just uh that's just like window dressing the actual core of the songs are are from my personal life which is allows me to keep continue writing mm-hmm. i'll just hide the realities of my personal life using metaphors and, and and all this stuff window dressing of you know dinosaurs in outer space and naked women in outer space and and fire and religion and all this kind of stuff just mm-hmm. to dress it up to make it sound grand, to fit the actual music that I wrote. Um, but so, I mean, I, if I was just writing screenplays, if this was just total fantasy, I would have been sick of it by record number two. Right. But I, I usually started off like a folk singer, and I, in my mind, I'm writing a song about a girlfriend or a relationship or something, and then by the end of the song, I've dressed it up to the fact where it's cosmic, and then I'm like, okay. And now it's ready to go. But I always, I can always go back to the fact that when I'm singing the songs, they mean something really, really personal to me. It's not just uh, like a screenplay. What I loved... Is, so I could do that for years, and I have done it for years. Yeah. What I loved, and I want to touch on what you just said, was, was about the folk singer thing. Because, um, uh, believe it or not, I'm actually a, a singer-songwriter myself, but I, did, cool. I played folk music for like 25 years, and I actually play in a folk rock band now. But, nice. you know, I grew up a metalhead, you know, so like, you know, like most people my age, you know, you, you, hit, a, you hit a crossroads and, you, you know, artistically you might choose to go a different route, but you never lose that heart you know for love uh, for the, yeah. the, the music that started and one of the things I always loved about monster magnet music and was kind of what you said was that to me they were almost like and they still are they're kind they're cosmic heavy folk songs like like there there's times where I've been able to listen to certain material from you and go you know I, I, I can catch a glimpse of something deeper in there, but what I love is that you've put this kind of veneer over it, or you've kind of put this kind of like tapestry over it that kind of distorts what the actual meaning is, but you've made it so that it's not so, you know, it's not so like Joni Mitchell preachy. <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, they would throw me, I mean, I never had enough, uh, I think, faith in myself to actually go out there and sit on a stool and go, I'm me, you know, I made so much fun of it when I was in a punk rock band, mm-hmm. and uh, that I would just feel like uh, just the biggest poser if I actually did that, I just, because never, I never had enough uh, faith in myself to actually do it. It never even occurred to me right. to actually do it. Um, I kind of learned how to do music as I was doing Monster Magnet. 
Right. Like I just learned how to play guitar probably a year before Monster Man had started. Uh -huh. Before that, I'd been a lead singer in like a like a punk band, and then like a power. We changed to like a, kind of a power pop thing. But then I was just drunk and happy and happy to sing, but I wasn't a songwriter. And so the whole Monster Man thing, I was just kind of making it up as I went along. And so and I had so much love for for the stuff I loved in my childhood, which was early '70s rock. Right. Um, of all kinds, that I just piled it on. It was just like, well, more. I have to, you know, I have to be visually evocative. This thing has to be schmaltzy. You know, it has to be, you know, cosmic and psychedelic and also schmaltzy and also has to a lot of, a lot of humor and <clears throat> just more, you know, it was like put everything more. Um, so that's the way we got n known for being that, you know, just with a lot of stuff on it. Right. And I never, um, I, every once in a while, I'd reel it back and try to just sit there with the acoustic guitar, and I've done it on Monster Manor Records. Uh -huh. And I like that a lot, but uh, it seems to, you know, once I once I put the train in the direction of, uh, you know, cosmic psycho stuff, that's what we were known for, so I just keep going that way. Right. But now it's, you know, it's just part, it's just part of how I write now. You know, it's kind of like turned into a style. Oh, yeah. I mean, matter of fact, the first time I heard you guys was probably, like, when a lot of people my age, I was like, I was right out of high, it was probably like a year after I graduated high school is when Dopes to Infinity came out. And, I mean, I mean I'm not the, I'm super judge, super judge. And when I think of when I listened to that album back then, it was so, it's like you were, you were coming in on such an odd time. Like, the hair metal and the glam metal and thing, like, they were, they were like the fucking sinking ship. But then, like, grunge was coming in, and right. they were kind of reigning supreme. But then all of a sudden, you know, here was this band that kind of sounded like shit that my dad listens to sometimes, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, and I was, and, and I was like, dude, <laughs> like, I'm 19 years old, dude, and these guys sound like they're from, like, 71, 72, but, like, production wise it sounded like 93 you know and i'm like you know so when you when you were really kind of coming into the scene like was there ever a point where you were just like this might not work this might not work oh, at the all. whole time yeah no, the, the, the whole time no i never felt confident about it at all i just thought we had just walked through some weird warp you know and we did we walked through we happened to be around at a time where the record companies really dropped the ball on, on the, they dropped the crystal ball. They didn't see grunge coming. Right. They didn't see. They didn't see the death of hair metal. They didn't know what the hell was going on. All they knew is that, you know, Nirvana had this huge hit, and that was the new way. And they couldn't even understand what that was at the point. So they just opened up their checkbooks and started signing people. So I just ran over there and was like, one for me, boss. You know, I, I knew, I knew exactly what was going on. This uh, small window was going to open up and the freaks were going to rush in. And a lot of other freaks rushed in too, butthole surfers, you know, a lot of people. Oh um, yeah, yeah. Got, si got signed to majors at that time. <clears throat> um, but I never, no, I never felt confident. I was like, there's no way we're going to last more than three records. But the yeah, fact that you have. Like, yeah, it, it, yeah, we did by, by, you know, kind of dodging bullets, really. You mm -hmm. know, it, it wasn't a, uh, a major label success story by any stretch of the imagination. It was one of those things where you had to go in, be indie, then go to the major, because what else are you going to do? Um, right. Um, you know, take the money and... and travel the world, you know, to spread the message. That's the only way we could do it. And, but I always knew that, you know, at one point we'd be out unless right. the thing like hit like Metallica, you know, um, unless it, unless the world really, really got cool overnight, this thing isn't going to last for a long time. So, um, yeah. And, and sure enough, that day came and I was just like, I got to get out of here. Right. And steer, and steer the ship towards Europe. Yeah. And then go, all right, you know, I just, I really just want a life in music. That's really all I ever wanted. To make albums and tour and be that guy. And not, not you know, go back to the gas station or the 7-Eleven stuff. That's all I wanted to do. It wasn't a matter of money. It was a matter of lifestyle. That's interesting because a friend of mine and I were just talking about this the other day on the telephone. And we were saying um, how... It's interesting that as as a band, 
you know, if you set your not it, it, like it's not that it's wrong to dream big, but if you set your expectations on a realistic level, that you can really survive a very long time because you're not going to self implode on y- y- this this failure that you've set yourself up for. But like you said, like if you said my my goal is to play music. And for this to be what I do, even if it means that I have to do like, you know, 180 shows in Europe and like 20 in America or whatever, like mm-hmm. you, you just found you found a way to do it and to sustain it. Yeah, I mean, you know, you do you do whatever you have to do. And, and I wasn't particularly young either you know most of it happened to me in my late 20s and early 30s so i already read a bunch of rock and roll books and watched enough old hollywood movies to know what show business was like you know and it's the stereotypes are really true man i mean they're really true so i wasn't you know i wasn't gonna fall for this right yeah and you also shit you know yeah and you so i mean i knew that it was like the only reality of Monster Magnet that I wanted it to be was going to be in my own head, hopefully with the guys in the band and the audience. And that was it. No one else was ever really going to get it and everything was going to be slimy, cheese ball, um, cheese ball show business stuff and numbers and all this stuff. And sure enough, it was very, very true. And with that in mind, I just went for, for where the people got it the most. So mm-hmm. when I went to Europe and played to Europe, that's where I wanted to be. I didn't want to be in America. America's very unforgiving. I mean, you know, it's an unforgiving place, really. America, in my, you know, people get mad at me for saying this, but in my estimation, I mean, the whole rock and roll spirit in America died years ago. Years ago. Oh, yeah. 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 And it's unappreciative, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's just the way America is. They're always looking for the next big thing. Mm -hmm. And... It's fine. It doesn't mean there's not cool people here, but the, the the beast, the beast that is corporate money America, doesn't allow right now and hasn't allowed for years of anything really cool or esoteric to rise to the top. It's just not part of the plan. It just doesn't make enough money. Right. It's too untenable. You know, it's just too, and, and anything esoteric, like forget it, you know? And so I just went to where a place where culture is appreciated as culture. It doesn't necessarily have to have the jumbo size crimpets next to it, you know, (laughs) or the double bag of potato chips or some sort of NFL sports connection. Or, you know what I mean? No, yeah, because... Yeah, it's just like, it's really rock. It's like, it used to be like this here, but then it turned into something else. You know, it's funny. So because I just I just headed my ship to where people were going to like it, where I didn't have to explain myself so much. In America, I always have to explain myself. And that, that doesn't seem right. And that's a bummer too, because like you know, for someone like me who's 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 a fan of so many different bands and so many, you know, so many of my favorite bands are also European, and I look at those bands and they will never come to the U.S. because there's like why would they? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a show and I've like, you know, I, you know, I, st- I stand at the back of the show usually because I'm working, you know, and I'm doing a review and I'm trying to take the show in. And my first observation is that the audiences generally seem to come across to me as entitled. You know, I'm thinking to myself, like, I remember when I was a kid pressing myself up against the stage and just losing my fucking mind. You know what I mean? Like, over my favorite band. And now, it's like, the people up front all have their cell phones out, and they're like, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, like, where did that spirit go? Where did we lose that? You know, we just just you know it's just i don't know it's, you know there's a bunch of, i mean we could go down the line i could i could i could read it to you like a uh, like a list insurance rates money culture um it's it's money it's it's uh uh, uh click culture mm-hmm. um it, it's it's content and, and like there's so much content for stuff why should anybody care about anything well, that's the other and, thing I mean, too. really, and, yeah. and we see it now in the culture. Nobody really cares about anything at all. They just keep going from one thing to the next, hoping that something's gonna, something's gonna amuse them for the next thirty-five seconds, or maybe a binge watch from here to there. I'll get from here to there to the next big thing. It's a, there's nothing. 
it's just a bunch of it's just a big snowstorm of confusion right now. It doesn't mean like it'll be like that like that forever, but um, yeah, right now it's 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 just too much. We're a bunch of like a little kids with too many dessert options. Oh, yeah, it totally, you know, and the funny thing is, is that one of the things I wanted to backtrack on that I forgot to mention is that whenever I've read about you guys or like read about other pieces from you guys, you know, we talk about the cosmic aspect of your lyrics and whatnot. I'm always shocked that the band that I very rarely if ever hear you like attributed to is Captain Beyond. Oh, I love Captain Beyond. Oh, my God. I mean, it's obvious to me. I mean, because I'm a sure. huge Captain Beyond fan. Oh, yeah, I swipe from him. I will actually swipe whole riffs. Do that. <laughs> that's mine. Yeah. Raging River of Fear, that's mine. Give me that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Armworth, I want that one, too, you know? I want Armworth. <laughs> now, I'll push it as far as I can until the lawyers come, you know? They, they, uh, <laughs> it's... It, it has to be said, you know, it's like, yeah, it has to be done. And, um, yeah, I just, boy, there's a bunch of stuff in the early seventies. Those one album, two album bands Uh that should have been Led Zeppelin, you know, but But there was a short little window of coolness of that, that post sixties hard rock before it turned into metal. Um, which was like the coolest music ever. Oh yeah, I mean like when, yeah, I, yeah. when I look at the I mean cuz like when I when I look at the window of music that that you've put out over the years, you know, like like I said it it's it's not you know, it's not hard for me to go back and look at a band like Captain Beyond and go, "Wow, like, you know, had they come out now because that's where I also want to segue into is from what from your perspective of someone who's been doing this like before it was even cool where like you even said you know you kind of envisioned that there was an expiration date on it like you know now now, now you've got bands that are coming out you know like you know like the sword and you've got bands like Uncle Acid and the Deadbeats and yeah I love them uh, Graveyard and you know yeah. you know like a cadaver cadaver exactly yeah. I mean like like do, do you look to those bands and kind of you know and, and not from an egotistical way but look to them and kind of say like yeah I'd like to think I played a small part in in that uh, no, I don't think I, I. I don't think about playing a part. I'm just glad they're around. I, I just figured they're. I mean, maybe that's something to do with us. Uh, you know, holding holding the. You know, holding the flame high when nobody else was holding it. Right. Um, for that kind of stuff, but really, I think that's more of a. I think it's more a result of of YouTube. Oh really? I, 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 yeah, I think there's just a, a reference. There's a reference for old music that was not there before. You know, YouTube and just uh, digital music, uh, all music being easily shared, allows uh, musicians to reference stuff that they never could have referenced before. You know, so when I'm copping Captain Beyond licks in nineteen, you know, ninety one or ninety two. Mm-hmm. That's because I grew up with it. I know that stuff. I, I, I am like, I am Mr. Music, you know, I'm just a complete mutant. Right. But, you know, you look at somebody today, it's like, if it wasn't for digital music, you know, if it wasn't for di- digitalization of music, they never would have found that. They never, you know, are you kidding? You know, if it was just vinyl. I mean, people have forgotten about that stuff two years after it came out. Oh God! I mean, I mean or, or, yeah. or instantly. So I mean, that stuff was obscure when it came out. I think what's going on now is <clears throat> this is just a guess, but you can actually see, and you can see the style. You can see, you can hear the music. You can track it all down, and it's going into people's heads. They're like, "Okay, I got my thing here." You know, I mean, there's no way Cadaver could dress like they do unless they watch a bunch of old beat club videos. You know right. what I mean? Or like the graveyard, they're they're right. just, or the graveyard would dress like they do if they hadn't seen like footage of like Peter Green era Fleetwood Mac. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and, you know? <laughs> I mean, I, I suppose it's possible. You know, yes, they could have had these archives. Who knows what? A, how music would be archived now if we hadn't gone? If if things hadn't gone digital, there may be physical, but but. And it's even unimaginable now that anybody could 
would be archiving that much physical stuff. So anyway, so so there's this there's this loop. You know, now you've got loops in different in, in different styles of music mm-hmm. from the day of the music <clears throat> and it's feeding back in as reference points to a bunch of different musicians. And I would imagine that it's gonna get it's gonna get bigger. Um, how the bands deal with it that's their business. So like those guys deal with it well, mm-hmm. you know, cadaver and the graveyard and stuff. And those guys are doing it awesome. See, and that's so you cool know? to hear from you because it's it's like it's weird. It's like like we were talking about earlier. Like 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 at my age, like I'm 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 on this weird line where like I totally remember a long life before technology, before the internet, before everyone had computers in their homes. Like when you had to right. go to that's a good, record That's store good that you stuff. noticed that. Remember, you should remember it because there's not that many going to going to be that many people in the future that do. No, there's not. You know, but then like I also remember like you know like I, I think I'm also at that age where I can appreciate the fact that I can go on YouTube and see a footage of you know you know you know what was the some like obscure occult rock bands you know doing a full yeah, show yeah you just and she on tapped the beyond club, plane you know? in Texas for, yeah oh yeah it's amazing yeah you know, and so like you know but to hear someone like you actually have something positive to say about it I'll be honest it's kind of rare because a lot of times there's this kind of anger towards like oh it's, you know and, you know oh, I mean just, just go go talk to Scott Ian for five minutes and your face will fall off about how much he hates <laughs> the internet you know or whatever right, right. you know what I mean but well but, don't get me wrong I got, I got a beef with the internet too I'm, I'm just, but as a reference point it's the best thing that ever happened in the world I just, I wish more people would use it for a, refer- a reference point only. I mean, I, I love the internet, but I use it as a library. I don't use it as a social tool. See, I mean, yeah. And I don't, I don't use it to, to, to um, offer my opinion to one another. I mean, that, that's, that's where it's all gone wrong. You know, nobody really cares about what the other person has to say. When are people going to wake up? Facebook is a joke. Right. It's a game. People playing a fucking game with each other. That's where it goes wrong. You know. Um, it's trolling uh, at the lunch table. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. And I mean, and I always tell people that all the time. You know, like I started this blog because I wanted to have my own medium to talk about the bands that I love that, like other other places don't normally talk about, and I wanted mm-hmm. a place to kind of also kind of develop this kind of, you know like attitude of like you know you know where like I, I have fun doing it you know like I'm, a, I'm an Dude. old I'm an old dude on the internet poking fun of young bands you know that I don't like you know or whatever well, good. you, you should be you should be but the, the thing is there's always going to be room in any whatever the technology whatever the speed of of modern culture is there's always going to be room for for people who love what they do and put the work into it and right. can explain themselves um, my problem with the internet is that everyone there's a lot of people who really don't know what they're doing and they get equal time <laughs> you know they get equal time and it's, it's like come on preaching to the choir dude <laughs> you know, it's like isn't there some way where your fo- everyone's font or people who don't know what they're doing their font is just a little bit smaller you know, like eight point as compared to, or somehow color coded. Like I don't know. That's green. That's green colored font. That means the guy's full of shit. I had a friend of mine who told me once. He said, "He said the only thing the internet's missing is an eject button." <laughs> totally. <laughs> you know, so well, so you know, so we've talked about cadaver and graveyard and whatnot. Like, who are some other bands? Like, some some of those newer up and coming bands that you like look at. And you're like, you're like. Man, I'm digging oh, what you're doing. This is a band from the UK called Table Scraps that are awesome. They're like a kind of a garage band, <laughs> and they're <clears throat> they're actually coming out with us on in um in Europe. Oh, nice! This, uh, in May, and they're awesome. I mean, they do garage rock just the way I like it, so I think they're awesome. Um, there's a band from Sweden called Ball B A L L. Oh, I haven't heard of these guys. Yeah, you got to check it out. It's not, it just sounds like um, late sixties like biker soundtrack music, but heavier. Oh, that's awesome, dude! That's really great, good. dude. Really good. <laughs> that is fantastic. So those are two new bands that I really, really like. Um, 
There's a bunch of other, and like, you know, I always go down, like, I'm a big fan of the, uh, of that site, The Obelisk. And, uh, it's a you know it's a music site. Oh yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm very I feel very familiar with them. I've worked with them before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you know that guy's got good taste and stuff is coming up all the time. There's so much stuff coming out of Europe now. I'm uh, telling that, that's you. really the place. You know, that's really the place for me. That's the place to watch because that, that's the only. Uh, that's the scene. That's the place where you know their day is coming. You know what I mean? It's been coming for a long time. And uh, I think we're going to see a lot of really, really cool stuff out of there. There's also, I mean, there's great records everywhere. It's just hard to pick them out from the amount of records that come out. You know, I had somebody tell me one time when I was doing an interview with them, it was that, like, you know, the, you know, the, the best thing about today is that, you know, anybody can make a record and the worst thing about today is that anybody can make a record you know what i mean yeah. like it's yeah. like it's become come to the point where it's so oversaturated that we don't even get to see half or even a third of some of the great music that's out there no and and bands don't last that long to make the greatest music they ever did and 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 also a lot of bands just give give away their stuff while it's in its gestation period and ruining the effect that they would have if they would just develop it more and come out with a bang. You know, there's a uh, a thing on the internet where everybody's in on everything. Like, here's my demos and here's everything. It's a big mistake. I don't want to hear your shit. You know, no. get it together. Get it together. No, that, Make that's it really good. Edit it. I don't want to hear like reams and reams of fucking crappy stuff. Get it all together and come out with guns blazing. But now you've got this. Look, check it, our band. We got these likes. I'm following you. And like, why would I? I don't want to follow somebody as they're learning how to ride a bicycle. I want to see them win the race. Right. I don't want to see them learning. Or at least be able but to participate in the race. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, you know, <clears throat> but that's not a thing because in the time that I've been doing this blog, you know, like, again, it com I think it comes from like my age or what, or, or like, when, you know, like when I was playing in a heavy metal band, like, you know, there was no way in hell we were going to make a shitty demo tape and try to sell that as our music until we could get into a studio you know what i mean yeah. like and like it's the same thing with my band now it's like i'm not gonna sell some like basement recording of us on one microphone you know unless it's like really good quality we've done it and then we're proud of it and yeah, I, I, I mean, you want to go with your you want to go with your best foot forward at all times, but the definition of best foot. Oh, the definition of foot, <laughs> the de <laughs> definition of everything uh, in terms of standards and quality has been completely switched around. Now it's people's, everyone's opinion on quality is different. A lot of people's quality is just likes. Oh, that's yeah. Their, like, if people like it, th therefore it's good. When we all know that's not true. People have liked shit forever. Just don't don't be fooled by thinking your stuff is good because people like it. Ask Stone Sour. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Ask a Ben Sevenfold. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, because I deal with this on a daily basis, like uh, uh, like on my on on my on my blog's Facebook page. Like if 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 the biggest dog you can do me is to say. Only only four people liked your post. I'm like, do I give a rat's ass? I don't care how many people liked my post. I care about how many people read it and enjoyed it. I don't care about how many people liked it. Because you know what? Yeah. My mom and dad liked my music. They never came to my show. It's a problem that is... It's going to be here forever because that's just the way the world is now. But it really takes a tough mentality to continue upping their quality regardless of how many people in real time like it or not. Uh, this is a weird time. Uh, you know, a, a, a lot of the reason I think some of the music in the past in the rock and roll era has been so good is because there was a disconnect between the bands and their audience. And the guys had to guess. They had to guess. And of course, they guessed on what the people would like. 
but it was a guess. It was an estimation. It wasn't the thing. Right. You know, I mean, when you start going for making music just right for the people, exactly what they want, there's not much of a difference between you and a jingle writer. No. No. You know what I mean? It's like you're selling, now you're selling candy bars. I think we should add Rice Krispies to this formula. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I think really we should add some nougat because (laughs) people respond to the nougat, just a tiny taste of honey. And then, what are you making? Like, what are you making? Are you making art? Of course, rock and roll has never been strictly art, but it's always been this kind of blast that happens between creativity and commerce. And the struggle between the creativity and the commerce has been probably some of the most fantastic stuff ever. When it gets too direct, all access rock stars, VIP packages, um, you get exactly what you want. There's no way that the music could be as exciting as it could be. There's no guessing time. Uh It's completely like, I'm going to give you what you want. Uh, And it's like, it's not a good idea, man. I don't think it's going to work out well. I think I think eventually society will just go, you know something, fuck all of you. I mean, we're headed towards a fuck all our heroes mentality anyway in this country. Right. We're right there, you know. I mean, right, the biggest stories of celebrities now are train wreck stories. And it's uh, not, because, not because we want to forgive them like in the old days. We don't want to forgive them. Right. The internet showed everybody, it's like, fuck them. We want what you have. I want to be the star. I got a Facebook page. I got an Instagram. I'm the star now. Right. So I hope at the end of all this crazy stuff, as the world gets used to the internet and starts to, that, that they'll come out of it at least with some art. Well, so that's what I was going to ask you was that, you know, you know, you know, being from like our, you know, our generation from where we, you know, where we started out to where mm-hmm. we got to now, like everything else we've seen is just like this kind of a, you know, a cycle. Do you see this kind of bullshit cycling out like anytime soon, or do you feel like that this is just the beginning? I don't know if it's going to cycle out. Like we got used to guys like you and me of our ages. We got used to seeing the cy- We, you know, there was a cyclic pattern, but I think that old cyclic pattern has been broken. So there's going to be a new cyclic pattern, whatever that's going to be. I don't know. I'm too old to even care. You know, like it's like, going to ah, start someplace else. You know what I mean? And then yeah, that's going to become the new cycle. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Um, but there's got to be. I mean, if you have faith in humankind at all, there must be a time sometime hopefully in the near future maybe 10 20 years where people get a handle on internet communication and realize that that um basically fighting is not the way to to have a better world or better art or anything i mean fighting just fighting all the time and and we're sort of like you know but stupid fighting right you know um i think uh you know, hopefully people will realize that it's really not that important to be a minor celebrity. Because, I mean, really, that's that's what uh, a lot a lot of people on social media, really, they just want to be them. They want to be individuals, you know. And they've been trained through the 20th century and up until now that the way to be an individual, a popular individual, is to be some sort of, to act like some sort of celebrity. Right. Take a lot of pictures of yourself. You know, look cool, write a couple of cool lines, show your list of favorite stuff. And like, but it, and eventually I think people realize that that's really not the way to live your life. Who wants to be a minor league celebrity? Yeah. You don't get paid for it. No. It's like, so I, I think it'll, it'll cycle out that way. Meaning people, you know, you'll have generations that learn how to do it and not care as much. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's just, we're like all guinea pigs in this brand new world of, digital communication it's still really young right so you people will look back and go what the fuck were those people thinking back back then <laughs> you know, beyond that I, I don't know i mean sure it could go horribly wrong you know well, but well it, yeah yeah because it's funny because as you're saying this one of the things i was remembering was back in like i think it was i think it was around 94 95 or so uh the band queens right could put out an album 
at the time called uh, called Promised Land, and mm-hmm. uh, in that album, like lyrically, they were literally de- like addressing like this communication age where like the internet was really starting to come to prevalence, you know, and like where right. things were starting to come up. And even now, when I go back and I listen to that album, it's kind of like what you were talking about. It's like that is not an album that ever gets mentioned like when people talk about one of some of the greatest albums or whatever or what, but like in my opinion that was one of those albums that's that that, that sits like you said like 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 where all this chaos of like popularity and, and stuff is like like s- cycling around it's the stuff that resides right in the middle that's being completely circled around and not being looked at that is the stuff that I feel like you know like Graveyard Cadaver you know yeah blue, Blues Pills Sienna Root um, yeah yeah well, Wu Can uh, Scorpion Child you know like I can I can go on Crowbot from America I can go on for days and mm-hmm. just list bands that reside in this little like you said in this little pocket but I just look at it and I just go I don't know how long you're going to be here, but I'm fucking glad you're there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you, like, well, you, me too. It, it gives me hope, you know. Well, it, it means it's, there's a lot of people that are out there. There's still a lot of people out there that are sticking to their guns and their and their passions, regardless of how fashionable it is. Right. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, fashion, not just in clothing, but, but what's fashionable or what's hit or what's trending, you know that is an overwhelming force on the internet you know it's overwhelming force it's the most important thing to people who are on social media it's it's a fast one and and it moves so fast that there's no way that these people are ever going to really be land in some happy place of I think even enjoying what's coming out or what's good that's coming out. I, you know, there's a bunch of people out there that are just going to be miserable in 40 years. Right. You know, what was your childhood like? I don't know. I listened to a bunch of crap. <laughs> I, you know, I had a great time. I listened to a bunch of crap. I took about 3 billion pictures of myself. <laughs> I listened then I got to stalked on the internet. <laughs> then I got stalked. And, uh, and now here I am and I don't, I don't know how to deal with the rest of the world because I spent the whole time on FaceTime. Yeah. I, you want <laughs> How could it be? You know, there's not even, I mean, in in America, there's not even, you can't even have like a a cool kid moment anymore. There's no punk rock clubs. There's no place where you could go to to really go berserk without, you know, their parents are with everybody. You can't even be a, you can't even be a kid. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It's, it's 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 totally strange because the, <laughs> the, the 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 lifestyle of like this that I see of like sixteen and seventeen year olds now just online. Like when I think of, I was like, dude, like my only you know mode, mode of operandi, whatever, at sixteen years old was to get up front to the show and catch a guitar pick, you know, or to like meet my favorite band after the show, stand out in the freezing fucking cold, hoping maybe yep. they'll sign my record. And like now, there's like this kind of like there's so much like immediate communication through social media now. We're like you know that. Not, and I don't want to say rock star, but kind of like what you said, like the separation between musician and fan has all of a sudden been kind of blurred. And even though there's a connection, like it's almost like the connection that's there now is very unnatural. You know, like well, you yeah, it, 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 yeah, it's unnatural, and and it's unnatural because it, it's un- unnatural. Uh, you know, it's forced. It's very forced. I mean, I can't imagine most most artists wanting to be in contact with that many people at all times. I mean, artists traditionally are a little shy and introverted, maybe extroverted on stage and stuff. But most people, you know, you want to, at least I do, I I need to be alone to write. I I can't talk to a bunch of strangers. You know, I mean, I, I don't wish them ill or anything, but it's like, no, no. Get out of my kitchen! You know <laughs> what are all these people doing in my kitchen? I'm trying to. Write. Um, I, I never, in in a million years, when I was listening, and I still don't, would ever want to be in contact with the artist I like. I'd yeah. be nervous to be. They're not like me. 
uh, and I'm not like them. I, they they do what they do because I know that they must be focused and they're in there working hard. Then they show up every couple of years with this thing, and I'm like, yeah, they're back. This is great. I don't, I, you know, I never even think about what they were doing after the tour was over. Or like and, and what, what they're they living with, like, like, and like what they were eating, you know, like I, yeah, like I never, yeah. you know, like I said, like even when I saw you guys back in the nineties at the masquerade, you know, like I, I like I never remember going, oh, I need to whip. I, I wish there was a way I could see what Dave was eating on the tour bus tonight. You know, what I mean? like, you know, like just, you know, my thing was like, so dude, I just saw stupid. fucking monster magnet, and then that yeah, was it. it you know? Well, it's just it's. That's straight showbiz. I mean, that's right out of Hollywood Confidential, 1955. Right. That's that's the thing that the the rock, which I never could get. It was like, well, you know, this is stuff for, this is stuff for multimedia stars. This is stuff for Beyonce type people, and you know, and like Cary Grant in 1955 or Beyonce now. It's not stuff for rockers. Rock, you know, rock people are supposed to be. Well, I don't know, you know what am I say supposed to be, but you start taking the mystery out of it, and it doesn't look that cool, man. That, you know what I mean? It's like you don't want to fucking know that stuff. That I don't, is the key. I never do. It's the last thing. And I think the bands themselves, in their desperation, because it is a desperate time, have allowed all this access. Because you know, well, some people are like that. They're like cool, but. You know, I don't know, the more access I see on a band, the worse the band is. <laughs> I should make a check of that, but you know, so you know what I mean. No, but I mean, you know, all bands with VIP packages suck. You know, or, or like there's something, <laughs> something desperate about this. You know, and it's funny because, like, I, like I said, like I've been doing this now for almost ten years, and it's, it's something I always wanted to do when I was younger. And you know, now that I get to do it, you know, one of my primary motives to doing it was kind of like what you said, because like I always wanted to kind of see. And now that I get to see that a lot, and of course, I won't mention names, but like, oh my God, some of the bands that you think would be doing the craziest shit backstage, like you go backstage and they're like, their feet are nice, you know, and they're drinking yeah, a Diet Coke after the show, you know what I mean? And they're like, hey, you want a Diet Coke? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, no. you know, and so like, there is this kind of mystique that kind of has gone away and as a guy my age, even even when I do these interviews and stuff like that, like, you know, I do them from the perspective of a fan, but also from the perspective of a writer. But to, to, to see that mystique, you, you know what I mean? Like, I like to see that bands like you or artists like you still kind of cherish that, like, the, that are like... You know, like, I, I, I don't want to take a picture of my hamburger tonight. Like, I, I, no, I, I don't no. want them to know what I'm eating, you know, or whatever, and, and, you know. And, 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 you know, and it's like, also for me, it's a protective device. I mean, I, I like my privacy. I, I always wanted to live in a world where I could pretend it was 1972 when I was on the road. Right. And that means no pictures because you know how much trouble I would get in? If I was an all-access band, Monster Magnet would be, you know, arrested. <laughs> you know what I mean? We all be like divorced. You know? like, um, but you know what I mean? You can't, ha you can't have it both. Right. And and I think a lot of all-access that mentality um, has has had done a brainwashing, a bit of a brainwashing job on the bands themselves too. You know, I see bands on tour. Young bands, you know, young bands that really should be, I, I would think, would be having the time of their life, are in the dressing rooms just tweeting. Right. Tweeting. I was like, you're in Belgium. It's like 7 o'clock in the evening on a, on a beautiful summer night. There's girls everywhere. What are you doing in your dressing room tweeting? <laughs> I mean, seriously, man. Like I mean, you're going to be 25. Beer you can have. Go, go drink is it. This, you know. Is this what the modern, like, 25 year old dude does? Right. And, and so it it it's eaten everything up. It, there's where's the life experience? Where does where does you know social social communication begin and end, or digital social communication begin and end? And where does you know, and where does life, real life, begin and end? Because Real life should not always be documented. God, there'd be no fun in the world, you know? No. I mean, yeah. you're always on camera. 
Really weird. Uh, it, it's a fascinating time, though, man, because uh, me too, I always looked at myself as kind of a reporter as well. Like a huge fan and a huge reporter um, who just kind of wanted to see that life and wanted to be that guy so much that I actually made it happen. So I was that guy. I was like, I was the rock guy, but I never really could shake the reporter fan side of me. So I'm always paying attention. But that's kind of, that's cool that you, that, that, you know, yeah. because a guy like me likes to hear that because you know, like you know, I didn't I didn't go study journalism. I didn't do like my journalism school was like Ricky Rackman and you know Headbangers Ball and like you know uh-huh. Rip Magazine and Circus. Right. Hit, you know that was my journalism school. And so like you know to get to talk to someone like you who I've admired for years, but to kind of like not be like oh my god, you know what I mean? But to kind of get, <laughs> yeah, right. get into as a person is it, it, it's a cool place to be, you know, and it's even oh, cooler, it's great. you know, when someone like you really opens up, you know. I, I, and really I opened up a lot more, like, you know, for years, for, uh, just because just I'm older now, I could say it, but for years, I, well, I, I wouldn't even have this conversation. I was like, no, I don't want anybody to know anything. Right. Just nothing. I would just lie. I was just, yes, I worship Satan. You know what I mean? <laughs> because and that's I probably all they would ask you. Do you really worship yeah. Satan? And you'd be like, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what do you think? You know, what do you do in your spare time? Masturbate furiously and think about Satan. You know, I can't wait to get on the road so I can, you know, have a lot of children. You know, and it's kind of stuff that would just piss people off. Oh yeah, and then, it, yeah. it's only now in my life where I'm like, you know, something maybe I should just start, start yakking. You know, at least be on record at one point or another. But I, I, and I'd rather do it with interact with people like you who know what you're talking about than to just go out there and like write some sort of memoir or something you know it's just better just to let it out right right but I mean the main point of it is what we're talking about is that we're in a time where that all that stuff is being lost um the mystery is being lost. I don't know if we can ever get it back again. I don't even know if people want that back again that may mean not may 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 not be the best thing i don't know what could be the best thing for the future of rock and roll or rock or rock may have just hit its vaudeville moment to kind of touch base what you were saying though was that like when i see these younger like you know we were making fun of them because of course i at least i was because i think they suck but like avenge sevenfold and in this moment <laughs> yeah. all these fucking you know these like these like i call them mall metal bands you know what i mean like they yeah, come out, yeah you know? it's like it's like, like hot topic yeah, yeah it's like the whole yeah. Out, yeah but the thing is is that so like i'm looking at these guys and i you know or, or, or you know or girl and i'm going okay like you were born when i was a senior in high school so which means that by the time you were old enough to form a band like my space was what you came into you know true so Very true. so that's always kind of my fear is that i look at these bands and i go your beginning is always going to be that so anything that comes after you is going to be that but then like I said, I get these little glimmers of hope where I see, you know, Graveyard and Cadaver and and, right. and Crowbot and you know Sienna Root and which, by the way, if you haven't heard Sienna Root yet from Sweden, you should totally check them out. They're I'll like, check it out. I can't believe I missed it, but I'll, I'll, I'll check it out uh, right after we get off. They are one of my favorite. They're kind of like <laughs> a collective, and they have like different singers singing with them all the time, you know, and like it's. But anyway, cool. it's, it's one of those things though. But like when I look at those bands, Blues Pills. Like, I look at them. Dude, you look at their social media game, it's almost non-existent. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I mean, like, I love it. I, and, I love it. And so part of me just hopes that, like, while there's all these shitty Avenge Sevenfolds and Asking Alexandras and all this shit and metal or whatever, that there's going to be some young people that are going to look to these other bands and go, wow, it doesn't have to be like that. I can do it like this. It, yeah, I think they will too, and I think yeah. they'll recognize. And it would be nice if there was some sort of, uh, you know, almost universal definition of what the bands that we're talking about with the Event Seven Bolts and the Nightwish or whatever the hell, all that stuff. Is, is, is that stuff really rock? Is it? Is or is it kind of pop? No, nah, man. You know what I mean, it's, it's just, like it's just it's just heavied up 
Tiffany. Yeah, it's, to me, <laughs> to me, it, it's a, it's more of a genre of pop than it is a genre of rock. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? It's more of an outstretch of pop than it is of actual rock. But, but that's just my opinion, and you know, to a lot of people, will think you know that this is their glory days. And, it's, yeah. it's not really these bands' fault. I mean, you know, just because they're born in a shitty age, to, you know. <laughs> um, but the, these bands that you're talking about, like Blues Pills and Cadaver and, and and Graveyard and all this stuff, that stuff represents me more like real rock. For when, when rock was known for just that, yeah, not for crossing over or not for necessarily going for the merch number one they're not merch metal you know and that's what we should really call the whole event seven oh i like that metal. it really is because it's putting yeah. your name and your, your um, logo on everything you can get right. your hands and, on and like you know good for them they're great i mean they're obviously doing really really well at the album doing a lot better than monster magnet or blues pills or any of these guys <laughs> so they're doing great but is it what is it you know it should be defined as such and i think it's more of a a modern outgrowth of 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 pop than it is of rock i mean they may use rock trappings but it's very very contained it's very so formulatic for, formulatic that it, it, it's it's almost is there less than one dimension is there like half a dimension they're like half dimensional right i mean like, you know, half like a quarter dimensional um there's no way that these guys are ever going to do anything else but what exactly what they do right um and without the bells and the whistles and the giant piles of merch and the, and the, you know, it's just not going to do anything. It's not even going to change within its own thing. Um, so that that strikes me more as pop. Where in Graveyard Land and all those guys, those guys, they, they don't have those kind of. It's, uh, it's about the music. You know, you know? Yeah, it's about the music. It's about the vibe. It's about the music. Um, it's substantial. It's something that you can listen to, like. It, to to me, it's like what this 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 generation's like Led Zeppelin and you know you know yeah. Captain Beyond and you know you know whatever you know that that they're missing because like I listen to Graveyard and go oh I know for a fact I can listen to Graveyard twenty years from now and love it because I'm listening to Zeppelin twenty years later and still loving it you know. Will, yeah, an, will an Avenged Sevenfold fan 25 years from now go, that's a great song. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, like, I think they'll just go, maybe I'll, play, maybe I'll listen to Metallica instead. You it, know, like, because that's where it all comes from anyway. Which you again, know, it's just like, pushes them back, you know, to where yeah, it started. Yeah. It's, it, it's so weird. Um, it's hard for me to talk about this stuff without appearing like a, some sort of, you know, a bitter social critic. Um, you know, being in the band, what I say <clears throat> about this stuff um, means a lot to to people, or it can be used as ammo against me. My opinions can use the ammo. Oh, yeah, you fucking asshole, you're just bitter, blah, blah, blah. So I'm usually hesitant to talk about it, but nah, not so much anymore, because I think it's really just a, it's just cultural observation on what's going on. It's all a matter of opinion, but I, I never want to get people mad at me for no reason but then I can't not talk about it when people talk about it I love rock and I love the mystery of rock and I love um, the spirit of it where you can reinvent yourself and be corny but creative at the same time and live a life like that um, in a world that's kind of apart from the rest of the world and it doesn't involve Grammy awards or big awards. It, it, you know, it's self-sustaining. It's its own little world, and that's the part I miss about it. Because now bands are forced to either, you know, they're kind of forced if they want to make a living at it to go all the way. Right. And and you know, I feel for the bands that aren't going to go all the way. I'm glad, almost glad they won't go all the way because it means they'll never, probably never suck. But at the same time, how long can they do it in this world? Right. You know? and eventually, they're going to have to go, well, we're going to have to go merch metal, too. You know? Right. We're going to have to, you know. If they want like to go that, if they want to go that route, they want to achieve that level of success. At some point, they're going to have to say, "Okay, well, we're going to go that way." And it's more about know? the definition of a level of, of success, like monetary success. Like, 
in the old days, it was a, it was a possibility where you could make it enough to be cool for a long time and still sustain. Okay, you weren't rich, but, but like me, I got to a level where I got to do what I want. I'm not, I'm not rich by any stretch of the imagination, but I, I it was enough for me to like fight and to be what I wanted to be. And now it seems like you're either all the way at the bottom or all the way at the top. And there's, you know, in between, well, goodbye, because by the time you're 30, you better quit that. You either, either better sell in mountains of merch or, you know, get that job at the gas station. Right, right. Which yeah. is a shame, too, because like you like you and I had, had just said, you know, there's, there is still that between. But nobody wants to be there. But at the same time, more people need to be taking a look at what's there because maybe they would see... Wow. There's well, I would some think that, that's, where, that's where the really good stuff is coming. Exactly. You know, that's where always the good stuff is coming from, is from from the bottom up to the middle as bands gestate normally, you know, and they but through road work and, and several records, that's when all the best stuff is going to come out. I, I would hope that that would be the signpost for other bands rather than the signpost being like ka-ching, 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 you know? Right. That's really in, a, in America right now. That's all this generation or a lot of this generation could really understand because we've taught them that money is everything and everything else is fine. We've got enough, we've got enough words and definitions to make you feel good about yourself. And yes, you are an artist and we love you. But at the end of the day, what really matters most is money. If you really, really want to be liked, you'll make a lot of money. That's the overriding, you know, subtext of everything. Right. And that right. didn't used to be that way. Money used to be, you know, number two or number three in the discussion of a band. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you yeah. asked Metallica back in, like, 84 why they were doing it, they weren't doing it to be rich. They were doing it because they wanted to be one of the heaviest bands on the fucking planet. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> like, they had that, that old school dumbass just say, yeah, we just want to roll the tanks over the whole, you know. We want to roll the tanks over the planet, you know. It was like really old school yeah. mentality. It was cool, you know. Yeah, buddy. I, I got swear, Dave, we could talk all day about this shit, I know. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I know, so, we could. It was great talking to you, man. It was great talking to you, too. But hey, before we sign off, though, uh, look, like, I wanted to ask you about your tour. So you've got a tour coming up. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I know yeah. you're going to Europe. And then uh, what's what's going on? Are we gonna are we gonna get to see you here? Yeah, we got full full on North American tour just about to be announced. Probably be announced in a couple of weeks. Oh, fantastic! And, uh, that should be around September at some time. So, yeah, like the rock does not stop. And it, you know, you can't as stop usual, the magic. as usual. Monster Man is a celebration <laughs> of life as we know it. People will die. Babies will be born during the experience. <laughs> People will cry. They'll laugh. They'll orgasm. It's a celebration <laughs> of rock for rock's sake. Well, I will. God de- damn it. Well, yeah. I will definitely be there when you guys hit Atlanta. But I as to w- I, I won't have a baby. <laughs> but you know, I mean, you know. Okay. Some, well, some, you don't know yet, man. So be be careful. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave, well, thanks for taking the time to talk, man. It's been a great uh, pleasure, man. No, my pleasure, too. All right, thank you so much. Hello, uh, brother. All right.